So first of all, why would anyone want to do AFP? Why would a brand want to do AFP? First of all, it has to be the kind of right content type for the, for the message. Some brands want to talk to their consumers in a 30-second spot. If the story's a bit longer and the message is a bit longer, then it seems to be right to, to get into branded content. Multi-platform tastic. This content can live everywhere. It can live in broadcast, it can live online, it can live on book, particularly on good food. We would like to do a lot of recipes and books if we can possibly. But it can also live in an app. It can live in any single medium that we can control. And that, when I mean we, I mean the brand and the broadcaster. Um, on multi-channel, and I'm a multi-channel broadcaster, the content lives for a long time. Uh, our usual license is around three years. So if you're a brand, that's a nice longevity of message. The brand also gets rights in the content, which is really important. So we share those rights between the, the producer, the broadcaster, and the brand. It's a three-way split between us. And that becomes very interesting as well if your brand. There's a potential kickback in international revenue. They don't see that as ever getting any money back from putting money in. So it's, it's quite a nice deal. And they can also use any of that content on their platforms too. And a lot of brands get involved because they're trying to kind of populate their platforms with good content. They haven't got any good content. They suddenly decide, well, doing a broadcast proposition is a good answer for them. And finally, and not least importantly, it's actually very pioneering. It's still a very new kind of genre. And it's really noisy. So for a press... If you're a brand that doesn't get any press coverage at all, doing content gives you immediate access to not only trade press but consumer press as well. The, the opportunity will not be big to begin with. It will be, I mean, UK TV's position is that we will see this as a facilitator for AFP. So we'll get people involved in, in, in AFP through being able to give them product placements. So it's going to be a driver for AFP. The market will mature. Uh, advertisers' wishes will be understood and worked upon and, and I'm sure... Ofcom guidelines will change with how things happen this year and then it will be very interesting to see what happens. So I think as an opportunity it's really exciting. I'm really excited that it's finally been allowed and I think there's going to be brands who are quite savvy and want to do something quite clever are going to really find it a good opportunity for them. I think. The most important kind of first consideration is what does a brand want to get out of it? You can't enter into an AFP deal until you answer this question. The brand needs to know what they're trying to do, what message they want to get across, what result they want for doing the content. Top tips would be to manage the expectation about what you're trying to deliver. Try to understand really early on what everybody wants to get out of the deal. Um, and the best way to do that is for everyone to meet and everyone to see the whites of each other's eyes very early on um, so you know exactly who you're dealing with. It's, I hate meeting the brand too late in the process. I need to meet the brand straight away so they can see me and understand what I'm trying to do as well. So that's re I think that's really important. Um, and then try not to lose it when, <laughs> lose your temper when things go wrong because things are going to go wrong all the way through the process. It's a long process and you've got to be prepared to kind of think creatively around the obstacles as they happen. Everyone is protected by the Ofcom guidelines so you know, the broadcaster has to work within those guidelines or risk losing their licence. So it will be very clear and upfront with the brand what they can and cannot do within that content and there shouldn't be any worries that anyone's going to be um, subverted to the brand's will. That's not what we're trying to do here. So what genres are allowed product placement? Well, films, obviously. We've all seen Bond. We've all seen every film with a huge amount of product placement in it. Series made for TV, sports programmes, light entertainment, single dramas. And these are restricted products and services. Alcohol, which we have... One of our channels is Dave. I'm gutted about this because uh, we have Old Speckle Ten as a sponsor. They'd be perfect as a product placement opportunity. Not allowed. HFSS stands for High in Fat, Salt and Sugar. So you need to check out if a brand is HFSS. You can check that out on the Clearcast website. Um, yeah. For me, I was a bit worried about Red Bull because that's high in sugar. Um, but luckily, um, there's a special ruling that allows the brand to be in that program if no money has changed hands in product placement. And it's just an event that Red Bull run. We don't give them, they don't give us any money for product placement. Therefore, it's okay. Thematic placement. This is what I think is the most exciting part of the whole new regulation change. And that basically yes. means that the program can be developed with a brand in mind, although that is not going to go well with, down with the world with Ofcom, so we need to be careful how I say that. But you can, instead of just having a can of Coke on the table, you can actually start integrating the brand into a storyline. Um, it's just a bit more, less clunky and more clever for the brand. The brand wants to do things that are going to be uh, an exciting way for brand integration. Just having the brand visible in a shot is not going to be hugely exciting. And I don't know if anyone watches Sex and the City here, but I think... 
that is a really good that program is a really good example of thematic placement done over and over again. When Miranda gets TiVo, four episodes of Miranda getting TiVo, showing how TiVo worked, demonstrating the benefits of TiVo, beautifully integrated into the content. She then joins Weight Watchers. Beautiful storyline moment, completely integrated within the content, not clunky at all. Lovely examples of thematic placement. Marketing is investment in a brand to get a return in sales. <laughs> Simple as that. So if they are advertising um, by using TV content, they want to see either a return in sales or they want to see brand perception shift. So they might be trying to reposition the brand in some with values that are different or market positioning that's different. That's the only thing that they, they won't be um, looking at pure sales as their, as their marker. ITV and Channel 4 have completely different sales strategies, which is interesting uh, for me as a non-ITV Channel 4 broadcaster. Um, and in fact, they're doing quite a few trials at the moment um, with long-running productions that they've got. They're also trialling virtual placement, which is, again, this company called Myriad, who can put the product in after the content's made, which is quite an interesting concept. Um, we're going to be largely doing physical product placement when we make the show, but other broadcasters are looking at, at virtual. Um, and then our kind of main strategy for product placement is, is a massive driver for AFP. Usually the first conversation I have with a brand is, Brilliant, give me 500 grand, we'll make the show together, it's going to be fantastic, sorry you can't appear in the content. They don't understand that, brands often think, well I'm paying 500 grand to make 30 second spot, Why, you know, I appear all over in that, why can't I appear in your content? So PP is going to finally give us an opportunity to legitimately have that brand in the content, which is really exciting. So just to summary, the key things are, you obviously heard all the, the legal stuff from the broadcaster's point of view. But two different methods. Are you going to do it in post-production? Are you going to integrate it? Are you going to use the money to prop up your funding? Or are you going to use the money as extra revenue? It's the first time that a producer and a broadcaster can share the revenue together, which I think is interesting. Um, for a brand, it's really exciting because they can get in the content. So they're not just pushed out to the sponsorship bumpers or to the commercial breaks in the spot. They're in that content in the programme. And that's exciting for a brand because you want to be where... You want to deliver high-quality content to your consumers. And that's what you can do with product placement.